coming to you straight from the Rio Grande and beyond and beyond broadcasting to the four corners of the globe so grab your seat your coffee or your sundowner okay everybody here we go on point as always this is gloves off gloves off back at you and gloves off i'm paul buitron i'm here with grandmaster blanton and we're touching base on a subject matter that has now traveled to social media and and uh, emails and texts and so on and so forth, and that's called cyberbullying. And um, as martial artists, many martial artists go into the martial arts because they were bullied at one time when they were, when they were growing up. And a lot of people kind of, went, once they start getting the rank on there, they kind of say, no, that's not the reason why I entered. But that is basically the vast majority of why many kids are taken to a martial arts school because of being bullied. Grandmaster, how are we doing today? We're doing good? Doing good. That's are awesome, you? my brother. Yeah, it's, everything's fine. Here in Texas, it's hot. It's hot here in Florida. Yeah, Texas, you know, we've been over 100, you know, but uh, probably since May here in Laredo every day. Yeah. You know, without, but people forget about that because of COVID, you know. But uh, Oh, yeah, it's running wild here. Yeah, so everything here is going berserk because of that other stuff. But uh, other than that, everything is okay. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, the sad part I'm going to talk about real quick is that a lot of martial arts schools closed or never open up again. Yeah, that's sad. Because of of the pandemic and because of the fear-mongering and because of everything that's happened. And I feel for those brothers that are out there struggling, and I feel for a lot of those that are this is their only income yeah. and uh, trying to make it to the schools and everything. But, you know, some have tried going online. It just seems not yeah. to work, you know. But other than that, you know, uh, I'll ask the, the community out there, those watching, support your local martial arts schools. They, exactly. were there. they supported you when, when, when you needed them. So, you know, go back out there and say hello and try to take a couple of classes. Try to keep it alive because – some of these schools have been around the community for a very long time. Long time. Absolutely. So here comes to that question. When you and I were talking about this, we're talking about bullying and cyberbullying. What do you what's your take from that? Because it's 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 a problem. It's a big problem that people don't know about. Uh the cyber bullying, without well, running all of bullies. Uh, the bullies usually will confront you face to face. These people sit behind a keyboard and they attack you from a keyboard. They have fake names. They, I never heard of cyberbullying before until it happened to me. But uh, if you post anything on bullying, automatically they start attacking you. They'll call you up face. A fraud, but it's not so low, and this is what really got me mad. It's not so low, they are acting people to have passed away that they're not defending themselves. Now, how low did you get? No respect for the family, no respect for the student, no respect for that instructor. He is defending himself, he's dead, and this happened to me. Uh, a couple of years ago, my instructor passed away, and I got a picture here. That's Grandmaster Henri. Now, this is a young picture of him, but there's Elvis. He was his instructor, all right? Sure. These people, I thought a memorial of stuff. Oh, that's my instructor. 30 years I've been with him, you know, all right? I thought a post up. It's not a tag by a boy, a cyber boy. Called him a fake, a fraud, a paper mill. Uh, he never called Elvis. Uh, he never called Bill Wallace. All this stuff. And then he asked me, he said, This man, you never worked out with him. All you did was write a paycheck to him, pay him for your belt right or whatever you have. Which is untrue. You don't know me. I've got videos in my library where I trained with this man for 30 years. I'm one of his high-grade instructors 
who's promoted is Ray Master. Absolutely. But, but yeah, they don't believe it. You know, usually those cyber bullies that are that jump up, they're usually somebody that that and um, that has problems. Usually, they come up with a pseudo name that some yep. word nobody recognizes them. Yep. Nobody knows who they are. They befriend everybody, but you know the problem happens all over the place. Okay, yep. and when you confront, and if there is somebody that has, and they confront them, usually they they start to you know, do the moonwalk and shake, shake away. They don't really understand that. But the problem here, uh, my brother, is that I just, you know, shy them away. Just forget about them. Unless they really have a name on them, then we can, we can, we can take, take a problem into a, into a different, different hand. But cyberbullying, the first time I ever heard of it was with Curtis Silua from the Guardian Angels. Uh, we we're talking about bullying and so on and so forth. And he goes, let me write you, a, let me send you a paper that came out. And he sent me that and I said, cyber bully. And then I started hearing about the issues with MySpace. Yep. Facebook was just coming out at the time. And then I started realizing that, that it's in there. Can, how can, can it happen? Because you see, there's a lot of people that are on Facebook. Okay. Oh, yeah. And there's a lot of folks that, that, befriend you and your your friends and you might have a type of humor that they don't like or they're not yeah. used to and for them it might become offensive or might not and you know that dark humor it's kind of how can i put it you know um they might not understand what's going on but that's not what cyberbullying is cyberbullying no. is actually somebody going after somebody exactly. and continue insulting them and harassing them and basically degrading them wherever they post. Yep. So, well, that's what happens to a lot of kids. They go into, they now have Facebook, which they shouldn't have because Facebook is for adults, but yet a lot of parents, their yep, kids have it, kids. 13, 12 year olds that have Facebook and they should not have. And um, what happens is, is they'll follow them through a friend. They're not their friends, but as soon as they make a comment, they start yep. attacking yep. somewhere else. Yep. And, and they go here and they start attacking. So they're, they're following you. They're, they're, they're hunting you down. And that's the scary part because it's, it's, uh, it, can, it can hurt a lot of those teens that are out there. A lot of people, actually. Because oh, yeah. You know because as soon as you make one comment someplace on another friend's page, they're here, they come attacking you. And yep. that's the problem. And they're not, your, they're not associated with you. How can you deal with that? One way on social media is to block them. That's what I do. Uh, report them. You know what? Ignore them. You know, uh, maybe these, uh, my uncle used to say, you know, don't don't worry about, about these people. They're trying to get attention for themselves because they have no friends. They're probably lonely by themselves. Yeah. They're just, they're <laughs> yep. somebody else. And, uh, and, and, you know, in a way, go back and that's probably what it is. How do you deal with it? I do the same thing. I block them out. I'll, I'll block them. Some of them even go as far as getting their name so I can't block them. They'll come back under my post. I had one guy a few years ago. We had a flight reunion in my home state of Alabama. And this guy went as far as to get on my reunion page. Do you believe that? And and start popping off about me. And he wasn't even he didn't even go to the school. So I contacted the administrator. I said, look, he's not our classmate. I said, you sure? Because we're going back from 1970 all the way to 79. I graduated in 79. I said, yes, I know. This guy's a stalker. He's been doing this to me on every post. And you know they had to block this guy. They were so frightened that my school, we went to the reunion, <laughs> they hired the lead guards to guard the event on Anderson's guy. And I said, that's crazy. Why do you want to spend this money? Let the man come in there and it'd be a bad mistake. <laughs> you know, why do you spend this money? I said, well, we got to take this threat seriously. But I mean, a lot of people, you know, getting hurt and he does go up. 
or he sends somebody else in there. And it makes sense. And that's how bad this guy went to do it. Right in the mind fight reunion page. That was just horrible. You know, and people say it doesn't happen to professionals. It happens to everybody. Yeah. And people say it, people say it happens to politicians. Well, then, it, bullying, this is where I look at somebody. And I'm going to divide this. Uh, politician. He does something wrong. People are going to say that you're no good. Yep. People, they're, they're going to go after you. And they're going to say you, you, you blotch something, you're a liar, what are you? That's going to happen because you're a politician. Exactly. You're a, public, you're a public elected official. The instant it goes, your wife did this, your kids did that, your yep. family did this, that yep. becomes something different. That ends, that ends the whole game. Um, the insults are going to happen. The word calling is going to happen. The tomato throwers are going to happen because yep. of that game. The instant that you cross the line with a public official is when you start attacking their family yep. and, uh, and their physical look. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that, that, oh, yeah. That, you know, that's when you start going after somebody. It becomes a bullying type action. Now, on cyberbullying, the problem is that you get somebody that will go out there and, and say you're a fake, like, you're, like in your instance, my brother or you're no good, or you're worthless, or this and that and that. And they yeah. have a picture of SpongeBob or something. It's not, it's not even a name. I don't even, don't even, I don't even, uh, how can I say, listen to them or go with them. Because uh, what happens is that mo most unlikely, those people right there, they're, they're just, they hate themselves, really. Your video went out. Yeah, it's going on and on for some reason. There you go. But, um, you know, that's that's what happens. And, oh, yeah, uh, they make fun of my load constantly. The way I talk. Oh, uh, your video how do you hold that rate? Your video is you look. Go back with your video. There you go. Here, that's, 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 no, do it again. Right there. Yeah, it's going on and off. Uh, maybe that got it. No. There you go. There we go. It's wanting to act up on us. <laughs> uh, five, four. What are you saying again? It's wanting to act up on us for some reason. Well, I'm known again. There I am. So tell me, how do you deal with it? What I, what I do is I try to know it the best I can, but it is old. But you old about more than I do, and I help their veterans. You know, I'm always on the veterans, helping them out on my patients. And when they attack them patients, I have to go around and block them. They'll come back with a different name. They'll come back and uh, make fun of everything I say. And I just try to block them the best I can. You report it to Facebook, they don't do nothing about it. It's a mess. I mean, I get tired of it. Or they'll say, I've never heard of you. I mean, I've never heard of you. You're not, you're not no movie star. Well, I never thought I was a movie star. I know I'm not a movie star. I'm just a martial artist. Now, I've never heard of you. I've never heard of your instructors or your instructors are fake and wrong. What did you do about it? So I wrote a book. I wrote my book here. And this book will uh, tell everything about the history of my martial art. And this is my instructors. I don't do it thoroughly on my training. And maybe this will shut them up. You think it worked? No. Then they come back at you and they say, well, uh, you wrote that book to make money off of it. <laughs> and I laughed. Make money off these things. You don't make any money off these books. I've done this so you people will shut up asking me and 
Tommy's face is wrong about my background. Your this video is my background. Yeah, you know this goes at all. Absolutely, and uh, you know, you know, brother, the issues with that uh, continue. You know, and sometimes you put up uh, whatever, and people you can't satisfy all of them. No, this is, what I tell, this, is, this is what I tell folks. You like what we do. You like the content that we have. And you want to be associated with us. Feel free. What are you going to gain from it is fellowship and a little bit of direction and, and maybe some skills that are going to save you one day. Exactly. Other, other, than that, other than that, you know, we need to realize that uh, why we're doing it. But for those frauds out there, for those guys that are being trolled, there's nothing really good about, about there's no. really nothing you can do about it, you know, and you just have to let it go and but just forget it. about them. Usually they, they go away on their own and just the more uh, kindling that we give to them, the more power we empower them with. So just forget exactly. about it. The more you pay attention, the more they want. So with this towards kids that are being cyber bullied out there, parents, what you all need to do is you have to, and if you're allowing your child to have a Facebook page, which number one, it's an adult page, and you're having them have that type of social media, you have to be very vigilant. You have to have their passwords. You have to be able to go inside and look exactly. at what they're doing. And once you start seeing the cyber bullying occur, make sure you're on your friend, uh, their friends list. Once you see their cyber bullying occur with them, and it's somebody from school, take pictures of it, report it, because again, a lot of school boards are now doing issues with cyberbullying as well. Exactly. So you have to make a uh, paper trail with any type of bullying for your child, period. I don't care whether it's on social media, whether it's in the corner from the bus stop, or whether it's in school. Paper trail everything and every kind. Yeah, you gotta document everything. Don't just say, I talked to the teacher and the teacher's going to talk to them. It's not going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. You know, I, I tell this, my brother, to everybody, the biggest conspiracy that I've ever seen is when the school board or principal or a teacher says, we care about your son's bully. We care. Yeah, about that's a joke. <laughs> they had, they've never cared one day about what happens until it happens. No. And then they're scared about the whole situation because, you know, they let it go too far. Well, they don't know how to handle it. The school right. doesn't know how to handle it. They're not educated on bullying. When I was growing up, I was bullying ugly, and they done nothing about it. Not one thing. I wrote my book right here. And this book is my true life story. It tells everything I went through growing up. What I went through, how I was misabused by even teachers, um, they didn't do anything to help me. My mom lived basically half the school fighting for me, and they wouldn't do a thing about bullying at all. If they were a jock, they got away with it. If they were just anybody, they got away with it. And they had, like, really. Well, you need to put him in a, a special school. And my mom would tell him, no, he, there's nothing wrong with him mentally. You know, I, I have a speech problem. I'm not retarded. Uh, I've got enough friends. I went to college. So, but yeah, people want to look at you and judge you by the way you look. I look different. I talk different. But that don't mean I don't have feelings. And that's another thing people don't realize. When they bully these kids, they have feelings. I know. I know what they felt and I walked in their shoes. And that's why they contact me and talk to me. The parents, how did you get through it? Well, I got through it by the grace of God and the martial arts. I, I, I marked, uh, a friend of mine learned me how to do martial arts. And, and you need to get in a regular land. We, we didn't have the money at the time. My dad and them. So later on, I got into a regular martial arts land. I learned to defend myself. I learned the mental aspect that 
you know, hit it off your back. But it don't always help us. You got to remember that. You had to stand up to these boys. I learned in school, once you stand up to these boys, they will leave you alone. And you might get in trouble by the school, but to me it was worth it. Because after I stood up to that one boy that constantly made fun of me, they let me alone. They got the word out. Don't mess with him. You can mentally abuse him, you know, make fun of him, all his names, but don't physically try to hurt this guy because he will hurt you. He knows what he's doing. And that's the way it is in life. Even as an adult, when I went for jobs, I was all down to I'm an employer. I, I was, you know, had a mental problem. I, I tell him, look, don't talk down to me. I'm like a normal adult. I am not mentally retarded. I did not come from the rehabilitation center to get a job. But then you're even harassed on the job. People don't realize it. People tell me, a boy is just at his level. And no, a boy is at every level. Adult. Older people are bullied. Bullying don't have an age limit. Absolutely. And they don't understand that. That's what really gets to me. People don't understand that. You're bullied no matter what your age. And then the cyber bullying come up now. So Aaron asked me, how do you handle cyber bullying? And well, I block the people. I try to ignore them. But some of these people have got outside websites that they use besides Facebook, and they'll flag you on their website. Uh, you don't know okay, you're being you know, you know, that's what I, that's what I tell you. Once you start writing issues out there and start slandering and defaming yep. you on the outside, and you have written proof of who that person is, then it becomes a civil matter. Exactly. So you know what happens is you might have somebody that's in Oklahoma and you're in Texas or you're in Florida and you're in yep. another state and they're and they're doing that. There's laws against that. Yes, literally. But you know, people need to get get the material of what's going on, and you have to basically confront them and say, you know what, buddy, enough's enough. Quit. Don't cuss them out. Don't tell them I'm going to take you to the park and beat you up. Just tell them, you know no. what, cease and desist of what you're reframing to, because we're going to take this to the to the furthest extent of the law. Period. Exactly. And t screenshot that, and if they continue with it, make sure you have uh, have a a record of it, go to the police, file a report, and take it that route. Yeah. And you uh, you sometimes, sometimes you have to use that because it will continue. And and unfortunately, in the martial arts, it happens. And it happens a lot now. You know why? Martial arts stopped being tested. Black belts stopped testing others. Yep. You went, you went to the tournaments and everybody was getting everybody was getting a medal. Even yep. if you lost, you got a medal. So understand what I'm saying? So in and there was no yeah. there was no it was it's not it wasn't like boxing. In boxing you go there, not everybody doesn't get a medal. No. You know, if you win, you win. If you don't, you don't. If it's a tournament it. and you might get you might get a second and a third place trophy or something if it if it if if at all. Yeah. But you know you have a you have a belt or you have a medal and that's the end of the story. Only one person gets it. That's it. You had to earn it. But but what happens in the martial arts? Now you go to martial arts, and everybody gets a medal. Yeah. And you're everybody. Like, well, he, back in my day, you had to win that trophy. Yeah. And all of a, sudden, a lot of them. <laughs> you know, and then all of a sudden you come out to what 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 place were you in? I was in twenty seventh place out of out of uh out of 30 and you're like yeah. and you got a medal and but you know and that's that's what happens we can't babysit them so you got to start no. getting these individuals that have been babysat have been given uh, uh have been given sugar and candy and and they've been babied through the martial arts and all of a sudden yep. now they have a a degree they're teaching out there and they've never really been tested no and unfortunately that's what happened so you got these guys out there that end up becoming the bully. See, that's a problem with martial arts. Yep. I'm going to tell, and I'm going to, and I'm going to be all honest. 
sometimes we get individual. And I tell parents this. You're going to sign up your child here, but you never know if the bully is training down the street at that other school. No, you don't. You don't. More likely he is. Yep. Most kids are doing some kind of martial arts, uh, at least throughout, you know? Yep. I'm and not into said, that and problem. If, and, if they, and if they are, they might be training at the other school. Don't you think for one minute that they're not training because more than likely they are. Oh, I hear it. Yeah, they're doing something. And uh, they say, and what happens when that bully becomes a black belt? And he was never corrected. No, nope. so he's he bringing the other people that way. Absolutely. I've run so, into that problem. <clears throat> and so we, so we have to start raising individuals to to teach individuals and start raising better individuals for society unless that's that's what you're something else that you want to go into but exactly other than that for folks uh, brother we're running out of time but uh it's always great to talk to you let's see oh, the great. i'm back honored back. to be home and we'll do it again and we'll Touch base. We today we touch base on cyberbullying and how it affects everybody. And then, believe me, it affects everybody because you always have that one. That one person. Yep. Yeah, that one basement dweller that has nothing else to do, and he comes out there and he comes out there insulting people all over the place. Exactly. Ignore them. If you can't, if you can't test it, ignore it. Exactly. So I'm going to tell you this. Show your book covers again because I want people to see them. Folks, now, this I want is you my <laughs> book I wrote on my life about how I was born and what I went through. This book here is on the history of my martial arts training. It tells everything I've done in the martial arts. How I got started, the whole work. So it's going to be any place about faith broad. I laid it all out. It's good oh, reason. Especially the end at the bullion book, it will really help a lot of people understand what I went through and what bullion really is and how it affects you long term, not short term. Absolutely. My brother, until next time, much peace. Peace, brother. Peace. You guys will see the next segment.